So welcome to the Hackathon 2020 Microsoft and Easter Seals presentation. My name is Michelle. I am from Easter Seals, Massachusetts. Our goal for this, this project was to collaborate and learn to solve challenges for an Easter Seals client with cerebral palsy and also to improve many of the other lives for our clients with other uh, disabilities. So Easter Seals, Massachusetts is just one of the chapters. Uh, it was founded in 1944. Our mission is to ensure that children and adults with disabilities have equal opportunities to live, learn, work, and play. Currently, sir, uh, we are serving over 21,000 uh, residents with disabilities, their families, caregivers, teachers, as well as employers. The Assistive Technology Program actually started in 1988, and we have more than 20 assistive technology specialists serving all regions of the Commonwealth. So we provide services to people with independent living, vocational rehab, as well as um, the waiver program. My name is Tara Spiritu, and I'm another assistive technology specialist from Easter Seals. I'd like to take a moment to introduce you to our client. Um, his name is Tim Kunzier. He is an adult male, as we described the cerebral palsy. Um, he is the president of his own company, Moving Inc., which is a desktop publishing and consulting on disability issues. You can see that he has a broad educational background um, and is a big advocate uh, for himself and for people with disabilities. Um, we talked about his advocacy work. He is, uh, he is currently on the Personal Care Attendant Workforce Council for Massachusetts. And below this, you can see some of the other affiliations that he's had over the years, including um, the Massachusetts Developmental Disabilities Council. So Tim has a wide variety of abilities and limitations. The limitations that we were focused on for this hackathon were his difficulties with fine motor control, his decreased strength, decreased range of motion, um, how far he can move his hands, and then also his um, dysarthria, which is that his speech is difficult to understand. But above his limitations are all his abilities. Um, he's tech savvy. He's been using technology for all of his life. He is extremely hardworking, professional, very caring, um, and a great sense of humor, one that is often beyond my own. So our process was to meet as a team um, to figure out Tim's goals and how they could be integrated into consumer and usable devices. Um, together, we studied how cerebral palsy can affect the different aspects of, peer, of people's lives. Um, we learned about the technology that Tim is currently using at his home and how assistive technology specials in general help to enable our clients to live more independently day to day. Um, we also talked about why and how certain features of hardware and software are important, not just for the typically developed person, but also for people for di with disabilities. And my name is Tim Banks, and I'm a technical architect in the Technology Center. And during this process, we had the opportunity to explore and brainstorm and ideate. Uh, and during that time, we looked at various technologies that are in the uh, consumer space today. We looked at various technologies from Microsoft as well as from companies like Amazon and Google and Tecla. And we were really in an exploration uh, to find opportunities where we can meet Tim's uh, abilities and provide him with new opportunities to uh, control his home, uh, find security using the devices that he has. Um, and so through that ideation and process, we discovered a number of solutions that potentially could fit and, and help Tim in his everyday life. And so first and foremost, we looked at home security devices and understanding how those play within an ecosystem. We tried to understand the devices that uh, Tim currently has, as well as potentially may have in the future. Things like doorbells with uh, video cameras, things like locks, uh, sensing technology that can determine if uh, a window is breaking. Uh, and then we started exploring existing solutions, uh, things, uh, opportunities like Tecla uh, that have provided applications that integrate this in a very seamless uh, way where somebody with a, a limited range of motion, uh, like, like Tim, can actually be able to utilize a mobile application, be able to execute 
uh, common functions that many of us take for granted, things like just turning on our lights or checking our video camera. Uh, we looked at uh, developing new applications. So using the Microsoft Power Apps platform in Flow, uh, we looked at exploring how can we create new user interface modalities that may serve Tim even better uh, than what's out there in the market. We explored how we can do voiceover technology to give audible signals to Tim so that he knows what's being selected, even though he may not have a screen directly in front of him at the time he needs uh, the technology that he's trying to employ. We explored uh, existing hardware, so existing technology like the Surface uh, Dial. We looked at mice that are currently on the market. We looked at uh, devices that Tim is already using in his home, uh, like trackballs, uh, as well as some of the Alexa devices that uh, Tim's already uh, employing to, to, to utilize some of this technology. And then last, we looked at how can we customize some of these ecosystems? Uh, how can we take some of the services that are out there and build those together into something that uh, provides an end-to-end -end solution that is really tailored to Tim's abilities and the types of control that he wants to have over, the, over his home, over his security, and over the people that he gets a chance and opportunity to interact with. And so we looked across all of that. And from that, we learned quite a bit. Um, so first and foremost, you know, I think the team uh, has been entirely enriched uh, in terms of our, our understanding of people with disabilities and also the people that support them. It was such a pleasure to have uh, Tara and Michelle on the team to really give us insight into uh, Tim and, and Tim's everyday uh, life and what he's trying to do uh, with technology, but also how the team that supports him, you know, sometimes um, almost acts like a MacGyver to pull together just the right bits and pieces to make things work uh, so that their clients have, um, have the right uh, capabilities at their disposal. We also realized first uh, something else, which is you know, individual accessibility needs go, go beyond a single ability. Uh, somebody who may uh, not be able to be verbal to utilize a speech uh, device may also have a range of motion um, disability that prevents them from taking full advantage of existing uh, accessibility technology that we build into our platform. So we need to think more broadly, but we also think have to think more specifically to folks like Tim and how uh, various modalities of interaction are going to need to be employed in order to uh, be able to utilize the technology that he has available. We also discovered a number of opportunities for Microsoft uh, to really take a leading role in driving and promoting an open hardware ecosystem. An ecosystem where just because we ship a product like a Surface Dial doesn't mean to, that it can't be modified once it's out there and in the hands of our users. Why couldn't we 3D print uh, an add-on for that so that a person like Tim can actually utilize that in a way that maybe we hadn't thought of before? So we believe there's a true opportunity here to, um, for Microsoft to lead in this space by delivering hardware uh, that is truly en enables uh, a larger ecosystem than what we envision uh, as we're planning the product. And then finally, we believe there's a, a great opportunity for continuous learning and experimenting with communities like Easter Seals. Uh, the world changes rapidly. Just during this process, we discovered new application uh, capabilities that we didn't know about. We learned that there are advancements in some of the accessibility tools and technology that Microsoft is working on. And so as things evolve, we can't wait years before we come back together uh, and look at, uh, you know, look at the abilities that Tim has and try to match that. We almost need to be doing this on an ongoing basis. So as we move forward, we're going to look at all of these. We're going to look at how uh, the Microsoft existing ecosystem uh, and some of our existing technology uh, can be employed to help people like Tim and help the Easter Seals folks uh, that support him. And then, you know, and by doing that, uh, we'll enable an ongoing dialogue so that uh, as, as we hear about more uh, people like Tim, that we can actually try to match them with the right technology fit that truly enables them uh, to be independent and, and have the capabilities that uh, they need to, to, uh, to be in this world as, as we see today. So thank you very much. I uh, appreciate the, the time uh, you took to watch this video and go team Easter Seals.